Good morning. My name is Rob Zemanchik. We're at the National Farm Machinery Show here in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm the Case IH AFS Global Product Manager and we're glad to be here with Leo. And I'm Leo Bowes, the North American AFS and Harvesting Marketing Manager. It's great to show you today our categories of autonomy and automation. You know, Rob has an opportunity to travel the world and look at applications of our products in our precision farming solutions that we provide. And Rob, maybe you look at autonomy around the world. What does that mean for producers? As we've traveled to the major crop production regions of the world, some running themes continue to manifest themselves in the marketplace. Growers are looking for timely solutions to their operations. Uh, this is critical for planting and harvesting. Autonomy is a tool that allows them to really have optimal conditions for when they go to the field and when they harvest their crops. And rather than be dependent and subject to the weather or or availability of skilled labor, autonomy lets us optimize that and be real efficient at uh, delivering the best in class output from our machines. Rob, I would say from a North American perspective, we get that same solution set being requested, uh, especially when we look at that North America, that row crop producer, how do I look at timely placement of whether it be seed, fertilizer, chemicals, how can I get it at the right rate at the right time, and then how do I use maybe automation within the cab to actually not only record that, but get that precise product in that field. That's exactly right. Hybrids and varieties today have been developed for maximum yield potential, but that goes unrealized if we don't hit the ideal planting dates or harvest windows for these crops. What autonomy gives us is a 24-7 opportunity to really work within the optimum time windows for seed delivery, for fertilization, or for harvest. And wherever you go in the world, the needs are the same to feed a, a growing population with these machines that can deliver this in the marketplace and Unless we do that, we, we just don't realize that full potential. And if you look over the last two decades, you know, automation started with auto guidance, right, within that tractor cab or combine cab, so allowing us to precisely pass over pass, get that vehicle in the direct spot. So there's items like AccuTurn, end of row, hands-free turns that allows that operator to maybe concentrate on other parts of that implement that's being towed on the vehicle. Correct, Leo. We, have, we came with guidance systems, you know, over the last decade or so, and those have really brought us a long way. But now we turn to the implements, and we want to really be agronomically optimized for autonomy. So here at the, uh, at the show today, we're introducing AFS Soil Command to begin to monitor and observe the performance of all the functionality within the machine and be able to map it and visualize it remotely eventually also. So together, vehicle guidance and as well, uh, implement optimization is the next level of autonomy that we're starting to hear from, that our producers require. And I think with AFS Soil Command, our producers talk about they get one chance to get that seed in that environment. So we actually start with that field cultivator to make sure that we can actually get that seed bed proper for that seed to be placed within it. So using AFS Soil Command allows us to take a look at that shank position that goes through the field to ensure that we have optimal placing of that seed when that early riser planter places that seed into that environment. That's correct. Soil management, seed placement, delivery, as well as uh, crop protection, all have, you might say, ideal outputs. And uh, we can do this manually, or we can do it in an automated database fashion. And by relying on the database side through automation, uh, we can, as I say, have increased the likelihood that we'll have the output we want. So when you look at the categories of automation, when we talked about AFS Soil Command, that allows us to plug and play maybe with existing products or future products. So we look at ISOBUS technology, allowing us to take that integrated approach with our AFS Pro 700 display and now have an AFS Soil Command being shown within that display. That's right, and with cloud computing and where that's headed now, we can share these data files and data streams in near real time for agronomic confirmation, for visualization, mobility, and other things that really dovetail nicely into the autonomous or automated solution set. So here in 2018, we're collaborating with both house farms in California, and specifically, they farm both in US and Canada. Uh, they're the world's largest carrot producer when we take a look focused in on their production. 
this allows us to take this supervised autonomy to that next level and implant that technology in their operation. At Case IH, we use a process called Customer Driven Product Definition. That definition allows us to define what that customer needs are, but then we need to get it in their environment. We need to get it morning, noon, and night to actually see how it fits and how we thought the definition applies to their situation. So by allowing us to do this integrated into their operation, we can then look at the use cases. In this case, we'll be doing deep tillage operations. So that pass-to-pass -pass accuracy, as well as having that supervised autonomy where I can have another vehicle in the field that's manned and having that unmanned vehicle now following that unit. That's exactly right. The Bolt House team, like a lot of large-scale operations, has expressed to us that timeliness is critical to deliver a quality product. It's fresh vegetables, right, that go into table uh, foods or juices. And by having that 24-7 full capability of the machinery in the field, uh, Bolt House Farms feels they can deliver even a better product consistently uh, throughout the year. And uh, so they're looking closely at autonomous solutions and enhanced levels of automation uh, in the future. So this project that we're working with uh, dovetails nicely into their needs. What we're going to start with is some uh, production Steiger tractors and we will equip those tractors with autonomous componentry. And what the grower has already started to do is to run those in the field with uh, manned supervision and we'll transition to maybe two tractors and one driver or eventually multiple tractors and one in-field remote supervisor who on a tablet observe the activities of the vehicles in the field. So he sees a number of entry points for this project, number of solutions for, for their farming operation that will really help them. And so we're already up and running and we'll continue to monitor this throughout the growing year. You know, I think for us it's those basic operations that we can take autonomy and plug it into an operation. When we look at those basic operations, how do we actually sense the implement behind. So for us, you know, looking at what could that future be with an early riser planter attached to it, we have to have that technology or sensor technology actually catch up to make sure we're putting that high dollar crop into the ground. <laughs> we want to make sure we get that one time to, to get it right. And in an operation like this with many tens of thousands of acres, they're looking at really a data-based approach. So capturing and visualizing these activities in the field on an ongoing basis throughout the day remotely is a key uh, value deliverable for them. So this is also part of the uh, autonomous solution, not just the vehicles and implements, but the data flow and the data capture and the confirmation that things went as planned and we delivered a result in the field that uh, the agronomist recommended. For myself, being in the industry or with Case IH 24 years, I look at technology and how that's just tightened and up. And, and I look back at 1994 when I installed the first yield monitor on Axial Flow Combine. To answer that question directly, it, it looks at you know, how do we compress that time frame and technology we see in over the last two to three to five years, whether it be LIDAR or radar technology, that whether it be on the automobile side or the mining sector side or the agricultural side, probably will actually compress itself. So the question is, you know, when is that time? And I think we always ask ourselves, but for us though, bringing it back to this Bolt House collaboration, it allows us to work with that producer to see how it fits into their, you know, system, and I call it ecosystem, because it really is when you look at how it's fitting in for a solution set. So we're learning with them as well on what that technology can provide for them. Rob? Yeah, in addition to what Leo said, we see two forces that really drive the adoption of the autonomous technologies. One is agronomic, and we mentioned the quality of the crop being produced. The other is economic. And as I've gone to Australia, Ukraine, and elsewhere, where there's pressure on margins or where there's, you know, weather risk or other things that would be something that a manager really has to struggle with each year, you see the pull for autonomous solutions even more forceful. So the, the needs are there, the requirements are being set by the customers, and it's, it's our objective at Case IH to deliver on that. Now, some things are already here in forms of guidance, like we discussed, 
and, and we're demonstrating with the pilot project at Bullhouse additional features. And in time, you know, the, the stretch goals of, of further innovations in autonomy will also be realized. But we don't have to wait for, you know, cabless tractors. We were already in the field with solutions that work. And so I see the adoption as being already underway.